Hey everyone, Inji from Great Thing Studios. So today I just wanted to do a quick comparison between four cameras that we own at the studio. The Panasonic GH4, the Panasonic GH5S, the Panasonic BGH1, and the full frame camera, the Lumix S1. Now you're probably wondering why I'm comparing these four camera. Well, I wanted to know how Lumix improved their sensors over the years, right? So the GH4, we had this camera, we had a bunch of those. Now this is the last one and it's almost used as a door stopper now, but it's a great camera. It was released in 2014, which is seven years ago. And I wanted to know how it holds its quality against newer camera, like the GH5S, which is like a cinema version of the GH5 without the stabilized image, but a better sensor, uh, a multi-aspect sensor, which is, by the way, slightly bigger than a regular micro four to sensor found in the GH4 and in the GH5. Also, recently, last year in 2020, Panasonic, um, released a surprise camera in a box format, right? Like the Z cam, like the red Komodo and such. It's a cube, a cube camera, which is cute, but extremely powerful with a lot of different features. And this camera, you can fully customize it. So it's the BGH1, which is a kind of a rehoused GH5S. It has the same sensor, but way more different options and also one extra stop of dynamic range. So we'll see this in the comparison. And also, of course, the Lumix S1, which is a full frame camera released by Panasonic in 2017 or 18. And I got this camera a year and a half ago. And I must say that I'm in love with this camera. Uh, the color and the look, the full frame look it gives is absolutely astonishing. But all in all, I must say that all these cameras have their pros and cons. So let's jump right into this comparison and see how they compare. So I did um, a few different tests, dynamic range, moiré, low light performance, crop factors, skin tones and color, and some non-scientific non rolling shutter test just to see um, the jelly and wiggle effect of each of these cameras. So let's jump right into it. So let's start with a little dynamic range test that I did over the weekend. I will play this video and let's see. So uh, it starts with a log format. All of these cameras have the same setting, ISO 400, uh, a daylight white balance. And right away, you already noticed a few difference between these camera. Let me pause this for a second and notice something. The dynamic range, the GH4, right from the start, you can see that the cloud is already clipped while the GH5S, the BGH1, and the S1 still retain details in the cloud. Uh, let's have a look at the scope. And there you go. That first section here is the GH4. And you can clearly see that the sky here is a flat line. So that means that while it was in the log format, it was already clipped. Let's go back to the log format right there. And there you go, you see a flat line, while all the other cameras still have a lot of headroom left, especially the S1. The S1 is the camera that has the most dynamic range, uh, even one more stop than the BGH1, but we didn't fully use it in this particular scenario. It was a cloudy day. Uh, each of these clips were shot not simultaneously. I used the same lens on each of these cameras, the Canon 24 to 105 f4, uh, just so it's fair, the same lens on each of these cameras, right? So right away, you see a difference in dynamic range. So let's continue the playback and see uh, what happens next. Let me remove this so it's smoother. And there you go. Also, you will you'll notice a difference in color, the way each of these camera render the water. For some reason, they all have a different color. Some are more bluish, some are more greenish. And it's funny, they all have a different sensor profiling. Uh, I don't know why. So this is a 300% crop, okay? Just so you can see the difference in color and also how uh, the details in the water is different. Some of these cameras have 
uh, optical low pass filter, some don't. And it gives a different result on the ripple on the water here, as you can see. So what I did, I matched the color of each of these cameras uh, right there. There you go. So now they all have a similar white balance. Let me pause again and let's see how they look. Now, I want to put your attention on something quite interesting here. The GH4 is a seven years old camera. Remember that. But when you take a look at the 300% crop, let me go on it right now. I want you to notice something. Let me go back to that particular part. Right there. Stop. Look at the details. The details, the resolution of each of these camera. Here is the GH4 in the corner. And here is the S1. So technically, the S1 has the best sensor here. It's a full frame camera. And it's a new generation. So each pixel is bigger. It can capture more light, more details, more dynamic range. Obviously, this is a 10-bit codec and the GH4 has an 8-bit 420 codec. But look at the details. Check, out, check this little boat here, this rescue boat. Red with a tiny window and some white lettering on the side. If we go on the S1, same thing, red, tiny window, and some white lettering on the side. And I would even argue that I can see the lettering slightly better on the GH4 compared to the S1 or the BGH1 as a matter of fact, or the GH5S. So I'm not saying that the GH4 is exactly the same as the S1. Obviously the S1 has more depth to it, more texture. I mean, it's a 422 color space. There's way more information. The dynamic range is different, of course, but look at the resolution here. The pixel, pixel peeping type resolution. You see that there's not that much more details in the newer camera, right? And we're talking about a seven years old camera from 2014, right? So I just wanted to bring this to your attention. So now let's go and uh, do the next, the next test here, which is dynamic range, this time in a different environment. I went into my basement in my garage just so this is an extreme situation, extreme contrast where you have almost the pitch black environment in the garage and a blown out outdoor scene where the car, where there's the ramp uh, for the car exit. So look at this. Same thing, same setting on each of the camera. You'll notice that green cast here on the GH4. The GH4 was notorious to have a little green cast back in the days. And also keep in mind that this sensor has thousands of hours uh, on it. So it probably uh, adds up to it. So now let's have a look at a 300% crop. And again, you can see a difference in the dynamic range. Let me pause this and have a look at the scope. Look at this. The GH4 has a flat line here, right? So you lose all the details on the brickwork here. Now, the S1 on the extreme side has way more reach. You can see the, you can still see the details uh, on the brick wall here. And even in the, in the scope here, in the waveform, you can see that it's not a flat line. You can see all those different nuances uh, in the brick. Now, the BGH1 and the GH5S, this is where it gets interesting. Let me go back uh, to the log image. Look at this. So when they released the BGH1, Lumix market this camera as having one extra stop of dynamic range. And it shows because right there, you can see there's way more details in the brick than on the GH5S. So even though it's the same sensor, that is inside the GH5S, the processing power here in this camera was able to extract an extra stop of uh, dynamic range. You can see it in the graph here. Here it stops, it crops at 75, 75 IRE, IRE, and on the BGH1, it goes all the way to almost 78, right? While on the uh, S1, it goes all the way to 90. So this is quite impressive. And keep in mind that the S1 has the full version 
of the V-Log, while um, the GH4, GH5S, and BGH1, they all have the V-Log L, the light version. Only the S1 has the full version of the V-Log, thus the higher dynamic range here. Okay, so now let's continue on to the next one. Let me play this again just so you can enjoy um, this test. And also notice that at ISO 400, you can already see uh, a lot of noise, a lot of noise on the, the GH4. The GH4 has way more noise than the other camera. GH5S, BGH1, S1, very clean at ISO 400. Obviously, they are newer generation sensors uh, on top of their game. Now, let's see the Moiré pattern test. Like I mentioned earlier, these cameras have, has, uh, they have an OLPF, an optical low pass filter. Uh, the role of this filter is to block all the Moiré. And they all have a filter but the S1, which is funny because when you look at this footage, there is absolutely no moiré, almost none, almost none. The GH4 has no moiré, the GH5S has no moiré, and the BGH1 has no moiré. And it's normal. All three of these, these, these three cameras, they have an optical low-pass filter. The S1 does not have an optical low-pass filter. Uh, the S1H has an optical low pass filter, but you have to pay double the price to get this filter. So is it worth it? Uh, it's, not, it's not just this, it's not only a matter of the optical low pass filter, but I just want you to know that the Moiré is not that bad. I wasn't able to recreate a very bad situation where the Moiré is catastrophic. When you look here on, on this preview windows, it looks like there is Moiré, but be careful. This is not the proper resolution. Uh, Premiere now is scaling down this video and play, and so the, the scaling algorithm is not uh, the right one. That's why you see more. But if you play this video, 4K video on a 4K monitor, you will notice there's absolutely no moire. Uh, so these cameras are quite impressive. So uh, the S1, um, I did a lot of corporate interview with the S1 there are situations where you, you see more, it happens. But when it happens, it's a very tiny, tiny, tiny moire, not something that um, would ruin your footage, right? It's a very slight moire. So just I just want you to know that either of these cameras, they have excellent moire control. You can shoot uh, brick walls, you can shoot shirt with textures. You can see here that I did an intense stress test. So there's like, two different shirts with uh, a pant and um, those very tight circles. So this this kind of test is supposed to show you the moire artifact right away, but you'll notice there's almost none. If you see some moire in this video, make sure that you're playing the video at the proper resolution. 4K video on a 4K monitor, 1080 video on a 1080 uh, monitor. If you don't, you will end up uh, seeing a uh, scaling algorithm that will introduce moire, but it's not moire coming from these sensors, okay? So now, let's jump into the low light test. And this is where, uh, really, the rubber meets the road. You will see how uh, the GH4 falls apart compared to these newer generation camera. Here at ISO 800, it's pretty clean. Uh, but now at 1600, you can see some noise creeping in the image uh, of the GH4. It really starts to show while the other cameras are pretty clean. This is 3200 ISO. Again, same setting on all the camera, same lens, same exposure. 6400, now the GH4 totally falls apart while the other camera are still clean, very clean. Uh, 12,800, still clean on each of these cameras. I removed the GH4 since it stops at 6,000. Uh, now, 25,000 ISO. The GH5S starts to struggle, same thing for the BGH1, while the S1 is still clean. 51,000 ISO and 200. This is extreme. You will never shoot in this condition, but still, I wanted to show you uh, how these cameras perform. Let me pause again. Uh, have a look at this 51,000 
200 ISO. The S1 is, is usable. And this is the crazy thing about this camera. And, and this is where you really see the power of having a full frame camera since each of these pixels are bigger, they capture more information with less noise. Very impressive. I never had to use 51,200 ISO in any of my shoots, but I know that if it happens, let's say I'm doing a run and gun documentary in extreme lighting situation, where you have no lights, you have to shoot an interview inside a tent, you know that you can count on a full frame camera to give you proper images, usable image, right? So, and by the way, sorry for, for um, uh, this light effect. There's bending effect that you see uh, on the camera. Uh, this is my basement, there was LED light and I had to change the shutter speed, thus um, you see those bending. I didn't do a synchro scan shoot. Uh, now, let's see another situation. Outdoor shoot again, starting at ISO 6400. GH4, very noisy, while the other camera are super clean, but at least uh, you can see the difference. Now, let's jump into 12,000. 12,000 ISO, these cameras are still usable. The S1 is impeccable. GH5S and BGH1 is at, they are at the end uh, of their usability. Now, 25,600. This is a lot, but at least you can still see how it looks like. Same thing for 51,200. This is extreme, but you see that the S1 is still clean. This is incredible. Now, let's push it even more. 200, 204,000, this is insane. But the S1 is, is a very impressive camera, I must say. Let me play this again. Wow. Of course, GH5S and BGH1 are totally torn out. But the S1, in an extreme situation, where you see uh, an alien in the middle of a dark forest, at least you'll have some footage, right? So now let's have a look at the crop factor. The S1 is a full frame camera. Obviously, this is the you, you have a full field 24 millimeter here. Then the BGH1 using the Speed Booster XL gives you this crop factor, slightly tighter. Same thing for the GH5S, since they have the same uh, multi-aspect micro four-third sensor and the GH4 here in the middle, which has the smallest crop. Why? Because the sensor used on the GH4 is a micro four-third sensor, but it's not a multi-aspect sensor. It's slightly smaller than the GH5S. Uh, Right and and keep in mind that the GH5 has the same sensor size as the GH4, so only the GH5S has the bigger sensor. Okay, now skin tone and color. So this is the GH4. All the camera the same setting ISO 400, um, daylight balance using the same lens with the speed booster. This is the GH5S. Okay. So this is me uh, doing some tests in my studio. Then the BGH1, same setting, ISO 400, 10 bit footage, Canon 24 to 105, same thing with the S1. Okay, so let's put them side by side and see how they look like. So this is the log format and then I will apply a Rec 709 a lot to see how it looks like. Um, keep in mind, all the camera have a speed booster, but the S1, the S1 has the Sigma MC21 adapter, so I can fit the Canon 24 to 105 lens on it, okay? So have a look at the skin tone here. They're great. I mean, all of these cameras have a great skin tone. I will match the white balance right now. There you go. And you can see that they're similar. The GH4 has 
a great color for a sensor that is that old. Obviously, the S1 has the best skin tone, I think. The, 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 the more natural one, the more pleasing one. Let me rewind a bit. Let's pause here. I think that the GH5S and the BGH1 have a slightly push toward the red and the skin tone. It's slightly more reddish, but I remember when I bought the GH5S, I noticed that it has it had that little red tint to it that sometime I, I have to fix, sometime I don't. It really depends on who I'm shooting with, the type of interview we're doing. But um, this is really something that I noticed with the GH5S compared to the regular GH5 or the GH4. It has more of a red tint to it and the skin tone, which is, is great. It makes the skin look more lively, but sometimes it's a bit too much, just a bit too much, it depends. The S1 is really the best skin tone here, the, the, the more natural one. It has that brownish type look, almost like, I don't wanna start a debate, but almost like an Ari, like an Ari Alexa. The skin tone is, is, is creamy and it looks natural without too much effort. Okay, so now let's jump into uh, the rolling shutter test. This is absolutely non-scientific, uh, but at least you'll have a good idea. The GH4 has a, a 14 millisecond uh, readout. The GH5S has a 12 millisecond uh, rolling shutter. Same thing for the BGH1. Um, and the S1, of course, is the worst. Since the sensor is so big, it requires a lot of processing. So the rolling shutter here is at 22 milliseconds. So you can, you, 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 can, you can feel that the wobbling effect is worse on the S1. You can feel it. It's not the end of the world, but still you can feel it. If you stop here, you can see that the skew is worse here than it is on the BGH1, for instance. So 12 millisecond is very good. It's not like a global shutter, but almost, almost like a global shutter because cameras like um, the Ari and the Red, if I don't mistaken, have a readout of seven millisecond. Uh, so this is 12. It's very close. It's very close and it's excellent. Uh, I, I think that the GH5S and the BGH1 are excellent cameras in this regard. Uh, almost, and you can qualify them as a cinema camera. You can do action scene uh, without having nausea, right? Very good. Now, as for the autofocus, I didn't have time to properly test the autofocus uh, uh, of these cameras because uh, when you put a speed booster on these cameras, you lose uh, the autofocus capabilities, okay? It works on some lens, it doesn't on other. Uh, so what I did, I took the Lumix uh, 12 to 35 millimeter, I put it on each of these cameras, the GH4, GH5S and BGH1. I put the autofocus with face recognition and I did a quick test. Uh, it's not an official test. I didn't test the S1 because the Metabone, uh, because the, the MC21 does not work is not compatible with autofocus, continuous autofocus while shooting videos. So I, I was only able to test it with these three cameras. So it's non-scientific. And obviously what I can say about the autofocus is that Lumix is notoriously bad when it comes to autofocus. The king here is Canon with their dual pixel technology and Sony. They have great autofocus while doing videos, uh, while the contrast detection type autofocus on the Panasonic is very bad or average. I would say average in some situation and bad in other situation. I used to be the type of guy who said, I don't care about autofocus. If you are a professional videographer or a professional cinematographer, you don't need autofocus because you're using, you're pulling your focus manually. Of course, this is what we do. But there are some time where I wish 
the autofocus was flawless. For instance, when you put this camera on a gimbal, a DJI Ronin, for instance, it's it would uh, it would be great to have a flawless autofocus because you're moving around, you're shooting, you're doing an interview, a walking interview, for instance. You want to make sure that this face is locked in. Right? But the thing, what happens is this camera is always hunting for focus and you're never quite sure. It gives you like a stressful, a stressful feeling where you don't know what's going to happen when you bring this footage in your editing room. So please Panasonic, I hope that with the GH6, you will have a new autofocus technology, okay? Or something uh, that is a real evolution, revolutionize the autofocus industry. I don't know, but do something because this autofocus thing is uh, very concerning for videographers, especially in this day and age where everything is becoming automated. Everything is driven by AI, machine learning and all this stuff. It's now time to have a flawless autofocus, please. OK, so now let me give you like a general impression of for each of these cameras. I think that the GH4 is um, still in 2021 a great camera. Uh, it's seven years old now, um, but I think that if you buy this camera used, it's a great little camera for all type of um, of work. You can use it for live stream. You can use it for vlogging. You can use it for your YouTube channel, whatever it is. It's still a great camera. Of course, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the newer camera. It's an 8-bit camera, 420 color space. It has its limitation. Uh, it can break apart uh, pretty fast. But if you shoot using Cine like V or Cine like D or the natural profile, you can get amazing results. Uh, now, uh, the cons of this camera really, uh, the first one that I can think of is it's a micro HDMI port. This is, this is really bad. I mean, I had four of the uh, three of these cameras and all of them at some point the micro HDMI port broke. So one when, when you're using this camera professionally on the field multiple times per week uh, this port is going to uh, break at some point. So I think it's the only con of this camera for this era, right? Now, GH5S I love this camera. I purchased it uh, uh, when it was released, 2017 or 18, and it improves everything. All the problem that what that you you could think of of the GH4, this camera solves it. It has a full size HDMI port. It's built like a tank. Color science is excellent. Dynamic range is slightly improved over the GH4 and this is because you're going from 8-bit to 10-bit 422. So it's not because uh, the sensor is that much better. Uh, like you saw in the boat example, all of the camera pretty much have almost the same level of details. But since it's a better engine, it's a better CPU, uh, a better codec, it allows you to get a slightly more dynamic range uh, out of this camera, right? So 10-bit, 422 color space. This was a real revolution in the game. <coughs> then uh, the Lumix S1 camera, this one too, I really love this camera. Uh, compared to the GH5S, what is the difference? Of course, full frame, it's a full frame camera without an optical low pass filter, but again, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, the Moire is very well controlled. There's almost none, right? So it's a very good camera. It's heavy. The battery life is insane. It uses a different battery type compared to um, the GH4 and the GH5 a series that have the same battery. The S1 uses a bigger battery that lasts longer. It's built like a tank. It's waterproof. It's dustproof. It's whatever proof. Uh, this camera is a real game changer. The full frame look is amazing. The color science is insane. It's the best color science of the Lumix series, period. Okay. Uh, if you want, the, the only downside of the S1, I would say, compared to a camera like the GH5, is you're limited in the codec. This is a hybrid camera. So it's meant to be a video camera, but also a photographer camera. So what that means is that 
Panasonic limited the codec. You, you, you have a lot of different resolution. You can shoot 6K video, 5.9K video, 5.4K video, HD videos, 60P, 30p, 25p, all this good stuffs, but all in long up format. No all intra, right? All in long up. 10 bit, 422, long up. If you want the all intra 400 megabits format, you will need to purchase the S1H for double the price, right? So, what you get with the S1H? The all intra format. Uh, the optical low pass filter and some more different types of resolution. But all in all, all of these cameras are um, very good. And by the way, I just wanted to mention something about the GH5S, the S1 and the BGH1. This year in 2021, they all received firmware updates that allow them to shoot raw, right? You can shoot raw with the BGH1. Uh, you can shoot raw using the Atomos recorder. On the S1, you can shoot raw using the Blackmagic Video Assist. I know it's strange. I don't know why they did a raw, two different raw format with two different brands. Uh, funny things like you have to buy one Atomos monitor recorder and one Blackmagic monitor recorder. Hopefully, they will release another firmware that will uh, make make you able to use any monitor that you wish for the RAW format. But keep in mind, all the, uh, these three camera can shoot RAW. This is amazing for the price. They can all shoot RAW. Now, the latest camera that I purchased is uh, the BGH-1. Uh, by the way, this video is shot using a BGH-1 as well. I have a second one and I absolutely love this Cube camera. It's really a rehoused GH5S, the same sensor, but with a lot more power, one extra stop of dynamic range, all the formats, long up, all intra, raw. And also the best thing about this camera is it uses uh, the professional, uh, oh, I forgot the name of these batteries, but the professional Panasonic batteries that are used on the EVA1. These batteries last forever. I have two of them and each one lasts four hours. You can shoot for four hours using these big uh, Panasonic batteries. Also, it has an SDI output, a time code in and out, and a gen lock, an HDMI port, a LAN port, audio in, headphone jack, and uh, a DC power port. So this camera is extremely versatile. There, you can do so many stuffs with it. You can power it using power over Ethernet. You can power it uh, using a big battery, and you can power it using the DC input. Uh, you cannot power it using the US. There's a USB, there's a USB C connection there, but you cannot use it to power it. But you can use it to uh, transfer file or control uh, the camera. Okay, so this is an amazing camera. You can output simultaneously from the SDI out in HD and uh, in 4K using the HDMI output. So this camera is amazing. Every time we do live stream, we use this multiple uh, multiple BGH1 because of its versatility, image quality, and the fact that you can rig it up whatever you want. The only con uh, with this camera really is the fact that there's no monitor there's no little tilt screen on it. There's no EVF. Uh, you really have to connect this camera to an external monitor. So it's not a run and gun type camera like the GH5S, you can just grab it, go and shoot. Same thing for the S1, you can just grab it, put a lens on it, go and shoot, you're ready. You have a monitor here. Uh, on the, G the BGH1, there's absolutely no way to know what you're doing if it's not plugged uh, to either a computer or an external monitor. So keep that in mind. It's really a professional tool. It's not for everyone. This is for uh, professional videographers who already have all their rig or their setup ready. Um, and that's it. I think it's the only con. You see, there's a dual SD 
dual SD port. Same thing in the GH5S dual SD. The GH4 has only one SD port. The S1 has one SD port and one XQD port, which is strange, but uh, I guess that for photographers it's great because you need to be able to have those fast um, burst of photography. So I think that's it. Um, this is my impression and comparison of these four cameras. I think it's a good idea to compare those and see how the sensor technology evolved from 2014 all the way to 2020 when the BGH1 was released. So uh, I can't wait to see what Panasonic is going to do with the GH6 and also probably in a few years the BGH2. Uh, I can't wait. Let's see. Are they going to release an S2 also? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. So take care. Talk to you very soon. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Once in a while, I release this type of comparison and um, hopefully we'll have fun. Keep shooting. Keep doing great stuff. Take care.